What's up, dude? Welcome. Hello. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. You? Uh, I'll let you know in a couple of days. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this fine gentleman has produced this piece for your enjoyment. <laughs> Look at that. Um, and I think I stumbled across your work on Instagram. Yeah. Uh, actually, we should start at the beginning. So can you just tell everyone who you are, what you do, how um, we can find you? So my name's Raymar. Uh, people call me Ray for short. Um, I'm an artist from London and yeah, basically art is my um, bread and butter now at the moment. It's what I, it's what I do full time. Wow. Yeah. Um, not many people who can say that these days. No, I mean, well, to be fair, like I'm just, I'm just, on, I'm just at the beginning of my like journey mm -hmm. um, doing it full time. So I was working, I was working for a large company a uh, couple of years well let me see a couple of years back it was like 2018 i i quit mm -hmm. and um yeah my fiance gave me the opportunity basically to uh do my art full time because a lot of um a lot of she's got a because she's got a good gig is what you're saying <laughs> <laughs> well yeah yeah um, no it was it was basically about that time to just um to to grab grab the ball by the horns mm -hmm. you know um, and so in 2018 were you doing a creative job no i was i was working for a creative company mm -hmm. but i wasn't doing a creative job um, and did i always find this interesting to talk to artists about when they have a non creative or a less creative job um, and how that balances with being able to create. So when you worked your job, I don't know if you're working eight, 10 hours a day, however many hours a day, and you came home, were you still able to and motivated to create? Like, um, yeah, I mean, it, what I used to do, I used to fit. I mean, I still do it to this day. I, I wake up really early. Um, and I, yeah, I, I have something that I want to do in the morning. So I create something in the morning. Mm -hmm. And then when I was working, I was actually doing, I was doing artwork in my lunch break. Mm. Um, and then, so, I mean, sometimes I was, depending on, depending on the situation, I was able to actually do bits of work at my desk as well, you know, See. but I was, I was just creating whenever and wherever I could you know um I guess in the evenings I would sometimes but then it would be a, a chance to just wind down and spend time with like family you know um, understood yeah and then and then how is the transition now um how's do you or is your what's your work ethic like are you like you do you find it harder to motivate or was it easier when you were just like on the clock and could just, and what were you doing? No, were, you, were, were you drawing? What, were, I mean, you weren't making resin toys at the office. No, you know? no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was, I, I was doing a lot of digital art, um, a lot of, uh, what's the word, like pen, pencil and paper as well. So basically I would be just sketching and then putting that all into the computer. Um, mm -hmm. I was just creating my own concepts, my own um, projects. Um, if you will, um, and I mean, I didn't really have like places for the stuff that I was making, but mm -hmm. I was just doing it and putting it out there. If you know what I mean, um, I did. I did battle with myself in ter in terms of like um, putting my work out and being like, "Oh no, is this good? Is this bad?" Or you know, um, and it's probably that's what probably led me to like having like. A, a million Instagram accounts. I probably, right. <laughs> probably had a million different Instagram accounts with like um, different like stages of where I change my art and be like, oh, actually, I don't really like this anymore, kind of thing. Um, but yeah, towards the towards the back end of when I was at full time work, I kind of found my 
my way and then kind of um yeah just decided I'm not going to change up anything I'm just going to go with the flow if that makes any sense sure and then so how did how did you um what was your first experience with uh with making pouring your own resin and making resin figures my first experience um what do you mean myself or just seeing it you yeah, let's start with seeing it and going to you actually make well it. so i mean um what's, let, let's see so I feel like I've come, I feel like I've got like come full circle. So mm -hmm. um, when I started, when I started work, it was back in like this, where the company I worked for was back in 2003. And I'm, it was in a place, it was in, a, it was in Soho in London. And that was a very like creative area. Um, and that's what kind of like sparked like my creativity again so um, prior to that I was just I like didn't didn't finish school um, I had a I had a full-time job like by the time I was um, 18 and that that kind of like just led on to me just working and I never really had the creativity but yeah I found this job and then I was I was like introduced to um fashion and like all this kind of like create these creative elements within Soho which kind of like yeah sparked my interest and I think around that time um it was like the early it was like the early streetwear scene that I got into mm -hmm. so I was really into fashion but within that there were there were like um stores and brands that that used to do like toys and figures and stuff like that um I think it was like Maharishi, I I saw a few figures outside that that store, um, and then I found things like Bounty Hunter, um, the um, the Gardener series with Michael Lau, mm -hmm. those kind of things there. That's what I I started seeing, and there was also a store in Soho called Play Playtime or Playbox, which was which was like vinyl toys as well, mm -hmm. and. Yeah, I mean, through that and blogs, I then found um, the, the the guys now like um, Suck Lord, um, Killer Bootlegs, all of those those guys, and yeah, I I found those guys like back then I think, um, and it can it. It came full circle when I'd, I'd um, what's it started a fashion brand myself, mm -hmm. or tried to start a fashion brand myself, and um, through like research and um, stuff like that, that's how I'm getting a bit like <laughs> I'm getting lost in my um, in my train of thought because of it's the right. uh, timeline. The timeline's really weird, but it, it's not it's not that important. But we we get no, the no, idea. I mean, basically, I'd I'd I've done a lot of lot of like research and things like that, and mm -hmm. things like what the um, like Sucklord and and those guys were doing. That's they've always been in like my archive, like my image archive. Sure. And then when I came and when I finished work, I did like when I was working, I didn't have time or couldn't really figure out how to do what they were doing. And now that I have the chance to, now I'm doing what I, like now I'm being able to like. Do like make resin resin toys basically nice and, started, um, and that started in january apologies for like going in like full circle no, we like the details so the interesting thing about most artists i know in the u.s is you know uh, having your health insurance generally tied to your work mm -hmm. is that all of the artists that have a day job and have their health insurance and have you know a decent living wage are all kind of pining for the day where they can support themselves with their work and then mm -hmm. all the and then it's like the exact opposite for everyone who's working for themselves because they're like oh well i'm just running a small business and 
you know, I'm working for myself and I have, can't afford health insurance. <laughs> and uh, it's, it always seems like the grass is always greener. Um, yeah. So, uh, all right. So then this started in January. So what was your first resin figure? Um, the first thing I experimented with was, um, I don't know if you saw, I did the red and blue pill. Red and blue uh, pill? I don't think I saw that one. So, yeah, I done, I done the red and blue pill, which was these two. Aha. Uh -huh. Look at yeah. that. So, I, yeah, I only just, yeah, this was the last thing I put out. I mean, mm -hmm. obviously, apart from today, but this was the last thing I put out. And, uh, I've done a smaller version, two seconds. So I was testing, I was testing out um, the materials and how it works and all of that kind of stuff. And that was the small version that I did. That was the wow. first one. I've done. Um, Very cool. Yeah. So that that was like sculpted um, by myself. And yeah, that that was I done that and a blue one like really small um in mm -hmm. january and then after that because i i figured i was trying to figure out if i was going to do more or not mm -hmm. and the materials being expensive as they were um i decided to like hold off until i knew what i wanted to do and then i used um yeah so then my first figure after that which i released in july was um the box logo bart figure Mm -hmm. um, I yeah that was when I decided um right let me go in and do this like properly and I one, used, one, um, once you release the Bart so tell me about I I the way I found you was I think the the Black Lives Matter Bart yeah, that you yeah. created and um I I don't know I have an affinity for you know Simpsons and especially Bart figures um and what artists, you know, tend to do to them. Um, can you tell me what what is it about Bart that um, that attracts so many artists as a a platform for like political statement? I mean, um, the number of Bar the number of Barts I have that are like political. Uh, Ian, can you hand me the the Black Lives Matter Barts that are on the shelf there, so I can show everybody. I mean, what, what is it exactly um, that? Uh, for me, he, for that for that one, I'll be totally honest. Um, I was reacting in the moment, um, and I that was like a spur of the moment reaction. And I had I had those barks there as a as the platform, like they were spare in in a sense. Mm -hmm. And I said myself right let, let me just use those and put something out there um in support of what's um in support of what's going on you know and supporting um, but like, but, you know. but but what is it about bart why why is it that i have so many political barts in my collection <laughs> I don't, why, I don't what, know. what it, well let's talk about if you can't talk about just the general what about about you thought that like bart is you know this this blank canvas for making a statement um I, well I, I mean i feel like from if i if i go back then it, it's his rebellious nature mm -hmm. um and you kind of when you was when i was younger kind of thing i he, it he was the he was like the rebellious type that you would like to be, you know, um, and that that in turn kind of yeah gives gives me that that kind of um, that feeling like give it like being Im being able to be immature through him, you know, if that makes yeah. any sense. Yeah, I I mean I think I agree with you. I think you know Bart has this. Um, uh, this rebellious attitude and it, it just seems like this this natural blank blank canvas you know for yeah. people to and one day you know i was, my my immediate goal is to do a, 
a book of all of the Star Wars bootlegs, but in the back of my mind, I think a book of, of Bart's. Um, yeah. There was this one guy on Instagram that was fantastic. I think it was called Bootleg Bart. And um, mm. he just had t-shirts. And he must, I don't, I don't understand it. Yeah. Um, he, he must have had 10,000 t-shirts in his collection because he was posting a new t-shirt every day. Every day. And yeah. it's like for every sports team, it's Michael Jordan, it's like Napoleon, it's just you name it. It is like, a, and I hope that that dude does a book of those because that was so unbelievable. Like the that was I, I came across there was a sh that there was a show a bootleg Bart show mm -hmm. um, that I came across. That was one of the another time. Um, was it a toy show or a t-shirt? It was it was basically a show that was themed around bootleg Bart. So it was like t-shirts, um, and then someone done. I can't remember, and I I can't remember the name of the artist. Um, and I feel bad for not remembering it, but um, they done a, a bootleg toy like a bootleg Bart Bart, and I think it was the first um, time I'd seen Black Bart. Whoever um, done Black Bart was that? It wasn't. It was so the guy from um, that did the bootleg bar worked with a guy named Manny Romero, Manny X, uh, Iconoclast Toys. Iconoclast, yes, that's the one. Yeah, and so he yeah. made the first two in conjunction with him, and then Manny went on and made another, you know, fifty Barts, you know, with yeah. Ron English and with all of these, you know, you know, just really was a platform to. Um, you know, to, to really push Bart. Um, so, yeah. And that was, yeah, that was, um, that was due. I, I found that show during the time I was looking in when I was doing like, or researching like a lot of fashion and stuff like that. And that was like another, another thing that like put toys on the map again for me, like, Oh, you can make these things yourself. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And that, and because I'm, because I'm like a fan of those the Simpsons figures as well. It it was like, oh, you could use those, you can use Simpsons figures as well as like Star Wars figures and things like that to to make bootleg toys, you know what I mean? Or resin sure. Toys. Yeah. Um so I mean, is as far as art goes, like have you found your medium? I mean, is resin it? Like is this your your current mode of expression? Or are you doing stuff in all sorts of mediums? Um, at the moment it is. Mm -hmm. um, I think I've like, I found something that I like really love. Uh -huh. um, I've, I've been like writing new ideas every day. Um, I'm aiming to put out a piece every month. Wow. And somehow maybe if I can, <laughs> if I can figure it out, maybe even two. Wow. <laughs> But yeah, at the moment, like I have, I have, I have ideas that could cover next year. If I that, once that's that's always the most difficult part of it is like the I you can come up with the idea and fill up a book of ideas and then having to having know, to put, actually put, you know create one just takes so much time. So yeah. are you are you sculpting these yourself? Um yeah. Yeah, so, so I use, I use, um, I use yeah Simpsons figures as as the platform, and I mm -hmm. sculpt over um, wherever I need to sculpt, basically. So like the most sculpt work I did, I think recently was the Barbies and Butthouse one. Mm -hmm. um, they were both Barts, and and are you? Did you train as a sculptor or just natural? Um, yeah, no, natural self-taught, I suppose. Yeah, everything. Because the Basquiat, the Basquiat hair on there, like that's not, you're not messing around. Like there, <laughs> there is no question about the likeness there. <laughs> Thank you. Anyway, I, I love this series. I hope this continues. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of other artists that you could do, but uh, I, I would love to have, you know, whatever you make in my collection. So cool. um, 
it's uh, the reaction to this figure has been great. I think we've sold almost two thirds of them. So there's really not that many left. Cool. Um, that's great. So, so what's next? This is, this is the future. Um, you have found happiness in, in resin toy making and, yeah. uh, and your wife is okay with it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, everybody, everybody, everybody's been, um, really, really, um, yeah, really cool about it. It's been, um, it's been great. People are loving my work, like at home kind of thing and family and, um, they're really, I'm, I'm really, um, what's it? I'm really grateful and thankful, like for the responses that I've got, like from yourself and, um, other artists like, uh, like Adam and Delicious Again Pete, Adam from Trap Toys and Delicious mm -hmm. Again Peter, um, the guys that are in the UK, they've been like like huge supports, you know. Um, and yeah, I mean, there's loads of other artists that have given me um, given me support over the, over this past like six months since I've been releasing stuff. And yeah, it's, it's one it's, it's one of the great parts of this scene. Is uh, I mean, there's petty, you know. I get to hear all the like the petty garbage and the the fighting and the jealousy yeah. and the the insecurities. But uh, uh, someone says, "Is pissing off racists a sign of success?" <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. <laughs> uh, excellent. Yeah. Um, but by and large, you know, there's some people who are rather secretive, but um, by and large, most people in the scene are willing to share uh have reached out and are very sort of forward thinking generous yeah. people and they've uh i i've really enjoyed uh and you can imagine being me i hear all the garbage right you know because <laughs> when someone's mad at someone else they come and tell me first and it's like it's like just chill everything's fine yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, they're just like stop making up a story like um this pop shop live. I don't know if you know this people, but I'm restarting pop shop every two minutes here. It's getting <laughs> kind of ridiculous. Um, all right, man. Well, it has really been a pleasure and honor to talk to you about this. I love your work. I, I, hope, you I wish me. you, I wish you all of the success. Um, Thank you. I think, uh, you know, I'm glad that you've, you found your thing. i you know, there might be, other things in your life, you know, down the road, but I, you know. I mean, well, I mean, I'm hoping next year to, if things change and mm -hmm. the climate changes in terms of what's going on pandemic wise, mm -hmm. I'm hoping to do uh, like a physical, like pop-up gallery kind of thing. Oh, -up oh wow. Store kind of thing. Nice. Um, for like a, a few days next year. Um, that's one of my, my plans. Um, just to see, just to see, just to see like what it's like and see the um, the feedback from people, you know, just off the sure. street. Kind of thing. So, yeah. Well, good luck with that. Let us know when that happens. So. Yeah, I'll we'll do. I, I, I will be in line. <laughs> Great. All right, sir. Thank you again. I really appreciate the time. Yeah. Talk to you soon. Take care.